Welcome to Daytona Beach. Yes, beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida. A new shopping center, a couple years old. New shopping center across the street from Daytona Speedway. I'm going to take a look and see what they have. is Daytona International Speedway. International Speedway Boulevard, Daytona Beach. How would you like to be staying at that hotel? And as you come off of I-95, you're heading into Daytona Beach. Shopping Center on the left. Daytona Beach walkway, famous welcome to Daytona Beach. And the Speedway on your right. Right across from the speedway, you're going to pull in and make a turn into the shopping center right here. One Daytona. As you see how it's laid out right across from the speedway, it's a little complex of stores and shops, restaurants, and of course, a big Bass Pro Shops right across the street from Daytona Speedway. For the longest time, this was an empty lot. Um, never did anything with this. This was just a, pretty much a waste of land here in Daytona Beach. And, uh, over the past few years, maybe 10 years even, they've been doing a lot of development, a lot of development at the Speedway, a lot of refurbishment at the Speedway, and uh, just overall just cleaning up this, this whole area. And they've done a real nice job on this Daytona 1. And if you're coming down here to Daytona Beach, race week especially, check it out. Um, if you're here when it's not race week, just coming down to go to the beach, um, it's worth a stop too. So just give it a look when you're here and uh, you might find something that interests you a restaurant or a place to have a drink or some ice cream all right so there's a big cinema right back here and they have a giant Costco towards the back of the parking lot as well they also have a huge Daytona hotel right across from the Speedway prime place to stay if you're ever here for race week you have your cooler in the morning head off to the Speedway and walk right across the street. Daytona has a luxury theater, has game time, game room, uh, athletic store. Uh, there's a bar, a few bars in here actually, I should say. There's a Daytona hotel, Four River Smokehouse, barbecue, uh, Rock Bottom Brewery, the, a huge, a giant Bass Pro Shops is right here. Elements of Design, Consumer Cellular, Guitar Center, Italian Restaurant, P.F. Chang's. Uh, apartment Complex is coming in, it says coming soon. Uh, there's a Gallery 500 in here, Sunglass World, Bull and Boar Barbecue Shop, uh, Donnie's Donuts, Ben and Jerry's, Foxtail Coffee, Jeremiah's Italian Ices. And it goes on and on and on. There's, there's a ton of stuff. If you can't find something that pleases you in this place, um, <clears throat> I don't know what to tell you. So this is a Four Rivers barbecue right here. And they've been around. I believe this is a chain. There's a few of them. Uh, really good barbecue. And as you come around to the side here, there's a giant Bass Pro Shops. And I've been in there. And let me tell you, it is huge in there. It's uh, two stories, two levels up around the upper there's like a little walkway that goes around the top and uh, you should be able to find what you're looking for in that place as well. So Rock Bottom Brewery right here. This is a brew pub. Um, and a restaurant as well. Never been there. Couldn't tell you what they have to eat in that place. But as you can see right here, they do have all their containers and they are, uh, as we speak, they're brewing some, some beer. There is the uh, the hotel, which if you're coming down for a race and you happen to score a room there, you're in good shape. You grab your cooler in the morning, head out the door, and you're right across the street from the track. You can walk right over there. Take you five minutes. You don't have to sit in traffic. You don't have to worry about anything. 
this place right here called It's Sugar. I believe that is a, uh, not necessarily a sweet shop, but yeah, it looks, it looks like it's a candy shop. There's more construction going on here. These are apartments that are going up. There's a guitar center. Consumer Cellular, right back here. And it's pretty quiet right now. I'm here kind of early in the morning. It's usually uh, usually a lot busier than this. I just kind of wanted to give you an idea what's back here and show you. As, uh, I've been here a few times myself, but every time I, they co I come, there seems to be something added or something new or something's moved. Uh, something that used to be here is not here anymore. It's just it's constantly changing. I guess they're just trying to find the right mix of shops because it is fairly new, but uh, they'll get a nice combination of shops in here and that probably should be it. There's a nail spa. And there's even the small, I guess like a police substation right back here too. Daytona Beach Police Department. Red Line Athletics. There's the Italian Ice Place. And if you take a look at this place right here, this game time, this is, uh, this is huge. Big game room. So for the kids and for yourself. Burger 10 and chicken to go. Never been there. I'm not sure what their menu looks like, but I have heard a few things about that place. It's supposed to be pretty good as well. So, there's a uh, running shoe place. Stoke Poke, which is another restaurant back here. They have some seating outside. Take a look. They've got a pretty nice arrangement out here. Um, I don't know if you want to be sitting out here in the summertime. It does get pretty hot. And here we are. We're in May right now. And, uh, and it's, it's warming up already. Cross over over here. We're going to take a look at this game time. Um, like I said, a lot of these places are not open yet um, because it is so early. But they have a little seating out here as well. Some seating over here. And a full bar inside, if you can see through that glass, there is a full bar. their hours. They're open until uh, till 11 p.m. and uh, till midnight on Thursdays, 2 o'clock in the morning on the weekend. So um, one of those places in Daytona Beach that is open late for you to give you things to do, especially if you're here for the races and all that. So it is pretty, pretty quiet this morning. Like I said, this place gets, at night and evening, it gets real busy around here. Uh, there's usually a pretty good crowd of people. And uh, it's usually some live entertainment, some music, but there's always something, um, some kind of entertainment going on. So as you grab your beverage, have a drink, this is the place. There's a couple clothing stores sprinkled in, in here and there. There's uh, Donnie's Donuts right across the street. It's a small little, um, it's like a little rest, little donut shop, just a little standalone building right there, uh, as you can see. And that's right near the little, there's a bunch of little traffic circles as you come in. There's a traffic circle there right near the Guitar Center as you pull in. And uh, that's where the Don Donnie's Donuts is located, in the shadow of this hotel, One Daytona Hotel. Balcony up there, a little restaurant seating area up top. Um, and there's a gallery down there, there's a couple shops that are actually built into the hotel itself. And uh, you see that little area up top.
don't know what the availability is in this place, what the rates are in this place, but... Alright, so we're going to take a quick ride in here into the hotel and take a look at what the lobby looks like. Um, see what they have inside. And that's the elevator to level two is reception, Sir Malcolm restaurant, Blue Flame Bar. There's a pool, fitness center, fire pit. But we're going to try and see what's upstairs. And there is a show car down here in the lobby. And this is a Rolex car from the Rolex 24 at Daytona. Five hundred and fifty horsepower, top speed two twenty five. These cars are amazing. Look like here in the lobby to read seventy years of Chrysler. They have a really nice setup in this lobby up here. And a little gift shop here that doesn't appear to be open just yet. And this is the Bluebird. So Malcolm Tim was a racer determined to achieve the seemingly impossible. He set five land speed records on the historic sands of Daytona Beach, driving the Bluebird at times ranging from 207 to 276 miles per hour. He often referred to Daytona Beach as his second home. Beginning in the 20s and during more than 10 years, he worked with the team to design five cars, all named Bluebird, and each equipped with many engineering innovations, resulting in a vehicle boasting a V12 Rolls-Royce R supercharged aero engine. The first man to break the 300 mile per hour barrier, Campbell set multiple land speed records and joined other racers whose achievements made this the world's most famous beach. And you can see the speedway right there across the street. As far as hotels go, you cannot get any more convenient than this place right here. Here's a little lounge area for seating. The view of the speedway right across the street. A little lounge up top here. those driver's gloves and that helmet that would be the driver of the bluebird that's a medallion right there token Some restrooms on this side. And that's what it used to look like on the beach road course. Or 
over on A1A and the beach. That's over on beach side. And that whole area down towards Ponce Inlet is, um, I mean, obviously it's still there. It looks a lot different now because there's condos, but that was actually the original race course, was a street road slash beach course. And they used to run down south on A1A, cut across, come back up the beach, heading north and to another cut and go right back out on A1A, right back out on the, on the regular road that everybody else was able to use. Pretty unique thing. And uh, if you ever in town, go down to that area too. There's a nice little restaurant bar called the North Turn, which is actually on where the North Turn was located. And they have a bunch of historical artifacts in there as well. Joe Weatherby Trophy, 1958. out to the balcony. A lot of racing themed artwork here hanging in the lobby. Uh, what else would you have here in Daytona Beach? Definitely keeps with the theme of the area and the speedway across the street. I believe this was a Daytona 500 winning race car right here. Benny Hamlin's Toyota Camry. And what they do with these cars, they sit in the museum across over at the Speedway, um, which is to be known as Daytona USA. And they sit there for a year and they get the car back on the morning of the following year's Daytona 500 and it gets presented back to the driver. So when they win the Daytona 500, they lose use of that car for a full year. One full year. It's in the contract when they sign up for the race. And then they get the car back. And I guess in this case, they decided to display the car here across the street at this hotel. It's a Joe Gibbs Racing Toyota Camry, driven by Denny Hamlin. So I'm going to wrap it up here at the hotel. Straight um, from Brick's Street, straight, straight you know, from the race track. It's a beautiful track. hotel if you're in here, you got to check it out. Uh, the lobby, the race cars in the lobby, the, the, the historical artifacts that they have here. Um, it's very quiet though, it's kind of why I'm whispering. But um, they got, uh, it's definitely worth a, worth a look if you're in town and if you have a chance to stay here, even better. And a show car out front here.
And out here by the Splash Park, there's a little uh, little area where you could sit down. They got some some seats here, or even a little table in front of you where you can place a drink or or food or whatever you're having, you eat a little ice cream or something. And then right back there is a little stage area. And last time we were out here was a couple years ago, and they had one of the uh, one of the final one of the contestants that was from the Daytona Beach area from American Idol. He was playing here. We got the guy's name. Not a big American Idol fan. But he was out here playing for a free concert right out here in this little area and it was, it was packed there was a lot of people um and that was right before the kickoff of race week um at the start of race week they do a hauler parade all the race cars the uh, tractor trailers to house all the uh, the race teams to house the race cars they stage right back in here at one daytona and they um close the road they uh with a police escort and they start heading right across the street to get the hall is all parked so that they can get them unloaded for race week they're usually here used to be a couple weeks long um now race week is basically thursday friday saturday sunday uh sunday being the daytona 500 and then it's all over so but it used to go on for a uh, cut like two different weekends not every day but it used to be two weekends um that was usually the length of race week and uh, now they've condensed it and shortened it i think that all came about after the whole COVID thing like everything changed everything else um, so now it's a shortened week, but when they pull in there on Wednesday night or Tuesday night even, they stage all the tractor trailer stage back here and they pull across into the speedway. That's a pretty, pretty good sight to see too. Uh, if you haven't checked that out, if you live in the area, it's something free to come down and see. And uh, they're pretty impressive to see those haulers. And then here's a walkway to the parking lot. Uh, there's the speedway right there, and if you see that building off to the left That's uh, speedway. That's NASCAR offices. That's where the NASCAR president the um, All the marketing people all the The high up at NASCAR. That's where the office complex is where they make the rules It's where they fix out the penalties and everything else um, That's where it all happens right there right in that building um, right across the street from the speedway right back here part of this one Daytona complex. So here's Ben and Jerry's. And stairs to head up to the hotel. Some boats out in front of Bass Pro Shops. Some ATVs. And we're going to duck inside real quick just to show you, take a look at what it looks like in there inside the Bass Pro Shop. One of the greatest racers ever in NASCAR. Lost his life right across the street there back in 2001. All right, so that's going to wrap it up here. One Daytona, going to load up the scooter and head on down the road. So. Uh, if you're ever in town in this area, you must check this place out. One Daytona. Try some restaurants in here. Have a few drinks, a few beverages. Support the local businesses here in Daytona. Uh, if you're here for race week, enjoy the races and enjoy some fun and drinks right across the street. Can't beat it. So we'll see you next time.